All right, well, it's the start of Old Fashion Week, so we might as well kick it off with a tiki old fashion. But wait, that's not really a thing typically. However, out of the new Tropical Standard book by Garrett Richard, we do happen to have an improved rum cocktail, and that's what we're gonna be making on the channel today. So let's do this. Now, for those of you that don't know, Old Fashion Week is a week dedicated to, well, the cocktail of cocktails, the old fashioned. It's actually sponsored by Elijah Craig. Today, we're not gonna be using Elijah Craig. We're gonna be going with rum because, well, this is a tiki channel and it makes more sense. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, today we're gonna be making the improved rum cocktail by Garrett Richards out of his new book, Tropical Standard. And in order to understand where Garrett got inspiration for the improved rum cocktail, we have to go all the way back to its predecessor, the old fashioned. So originally the old fashioned was simply known as a whiskey cocktail. And it was a way to kind of make the booze or the whiskey more palatable by adding sugar and bitters. Now by the 1800s, we start to see people start to improve upon the whiskey cocktail, or as we know it today, the old fashioned. And essentially what they start to do is add in liqueurs to help sweeten it up just a touch more. We see the addition of maraschino liqueur or dry curacao or even absinthe to boost the flavor profiles. Now looking at these traditional improved whiskey cocktails, Garrett takes his first inspiration by injecting things like creme de noyau, which we will talk about in a little bit. Now, much like a lot of Garrett's other cocktails, he takes inspiration as well from, well, the godfather of tiki, Don the Beachcomber, specifically Don's cocktail, Beachcomber Gold. Now, Beachcomber Gold was originally created in the 1930s, specifically around 1937 at Don the Beachcomber. And it was this cocktail of a wonderful interaction and play of funky Jamaican rum and almond extract. Now we see this cocktail evolve over time, even including vermouth, but that's not the cocktail we're gonna be talking about today. In fact, we're gonna wait all the way to the 1980s when we see an interjection of passion fruit syrup into the Beachcomber Gold. And it's these two ingredients, the almond and the passion fruit, that Garrett chooses to carry over into his improved rum cocktail. So without further ado, let's see what we're gonna to need to make our improved rum cocktail. To make the improved rum cocktail, you're gonna need moderately aged rum, dark Jamaican rum, aged Jamaican rum, creme de noyau, absinthe, passion fruit cordial, orange bitters, and salt solution. Now that was a mouthful and there's a lot of ingredients, so let's break each one of them down. First, let's talk about the moderately aged rum. Now, in Tropical Standard, Garrett actually specifically calls for Chairman's Reserve Legacy. Unfortunately, I just couldn't get my hands on it. My distributor happened to be out of stock. So instead, we're going with the Chairman's Reserve Forgotten Cask today instead. For our dark Jamaican rum, Garrett calls for Karuba, and that's what we're gonna be going with. For the aged Jamaican rum, he calls out Dr. Bird. Well, I happen to have that on my bar as well, so we're gonna be using that today. The creme de Nio is Tempest Fugit, which Garrett calls for, and this is our addition of almond. Now, creme de Nio doesn't necessarily have an almond flavor, but it's actually made from almond pits, which is quite unique. Some people said it tastes like cough syrup, but I'm really curious to see how it does in this cocktail. This brings up the absinthe. Now, Garrett does originally call for St. George Vert, which I happen to have, so we're gonna be using that today. Now, it is on the pricey side, but it is the one that I typically use for all my absinthe. However, I do wanna say that a little bit of it goes a very long way. You don't need to go and buy a 750 milliliter bottle like I did, but if you want, it'll last you pretty much forever. Now, the ingredient that you may have no idea what it is or even how to make it, and that is passion fruit cordial. And this is essentially a passion fruit syrup, although I actually like it a lot more than passion fruit syrup. Typical passion fruit syrup tends to over dominate a cocktail and not only that, but it will spoil, not even just mold, but it will lose its flavor over time due to the passion fruit puree. We solved that in our passion fruit cordial by clarifying our passion fruit puree. So let's make some passion fruit cordial and then we'll get on to the rest of the cocktail. To make our passion fruit cordial, you will need clarified passion fruit puree, sugar, gum arabic, and citric acid. In a blender, combine 105 grams of clarified passion fruit puree, and 227.2 grams of sugar. Then blend on high until all the sugar is dissolved, about two minutes. Now add 2.8 grams of citric acid and 25 grams of gum arabic. Blend again until everything is incorporated. Then pour into a sanitized bottle. Now this recipe is slightly different than what you'll find in Tropical Standard. First of all, I scaled mine down to make eight ounces. Secondly, I upped the sugar to make it a 66 bricks cordial so that it is shelf stable. I'm not gonna go through this fast enough, so I wanted to make sure that it'll stick around pretty much indefinitely. 
Next up, we have our orange bitters. And in the book, Garrett actually doesn't specify. So I'm gonna go with my Bitter Truth Company. And then of course, we have our salt solution, which is a 20% salt solution. For those of you that have no idea how to make it, simply combine 80 grams of water and 20 grams of salt, stir it, blend it, whatever you want to dissolve the salt, pour it into a dropper bottle and you're good to go. All right, no more talking, let's build this cocktail. We're gonna be building this in the glass. So grab a chilled 12 ounce double old fashioned glass and drop in a large clear cube. In the glass, add five drops of salt solution three dashes of orange bitters, a quarter of an ounce or 7.5 milliliters of our passion fruit cordial, a quarter teaspoon of absinthe, half of a teaspoon of creme de neo, half an ounce or 15 milliliters of our aged Jamaican rum, half an ounce or 15 milliliters of our dark Jamaican rum, then one ounce or 30 milliliters of our moderately aged rum. Now give it a nice rock stir for about 25 to 30 seconds. Express a lime coin over the top and drop it in. And then we have Garrett Richards improved rum cocktail to give it a try. It feels a lot like a tiki cocktail, almost zombie-esque in its flavor profile because it's big and it's bold. Obviously, we don't get the grapefruit and the cinnamon from the zombie. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it kind of punches you in the face with the lime oils from the coin. The absinthe does a great job of standing in there and really showing up. That passion fruit cordial, I like so much better than passion fruit syrup. It's doing such a better job of playing nicely with these other flavors. Then the creme de neo comes in and plays with this like creamy almond flavor, kind of like orgia, but a little bit more cough syrupy and medicinal, but not in like a bad way. And these things are playing a lot better and really, really nicely with the blend of rums, which according to Garrett Richards, this blend of rums is very similar in flavor profile to what we would have seen as pot still rums back in you know, the 1930s, to be honest. And if that's the case, I'm all for it because it's a delicious blend. But this cocktail, it feels like an old fashioned, but it's definitely got that tiki flair to it. So I honestly think Garrett kind of hit it on the head with this one. If we're going for a kind of tiki-fied old fashioned or a tiki-fied whiskey cocktail, this might be my go-to from now on. Yeah, it's a bunch of ingredients with very little measurements, which just means you need to be accurate when you're pouring. But I guess that just means that I can't drink three of these and then keep going. So that's really about it. But really that's it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click that little notification bell because all those things really do help to support the channel. From there, you can also go over onto Instagram and TikTok and follow me there at Mixing Up Tiki. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next week, you know the deal. Coley Maluna. That is such a bow. It's really good actually.